If you think the sun was going to sleep, well, think again. It gave us a huge April Fool's prank by giving us seven big flares and even a small solar storm. Those stories and more in the news this week. Solar activity has been extremely high this week. We've been watching a couple big sunspots that have rotated into Earth view kind of half lazily because we're expecting that it's, you know, we're getting down to solar minimum, so what could possibly happen? And then April 1st, Blamo! Region 2644 sent us an M class flare and that woke us up a bit. And then over the next 48 hours, blam, bam, bam, this thing kept firing off seven M class flares in total before this thing is rotated to the back side of the sun. It also fired off a few gorgeous uh, solar storms that have gone west of Earth. But we also have region 2645 we're keeping our eye on. That thing has also done some sympathetic eruptions and some sympathetic flares. It actually has launched some trash that it's been a little bit earthward. We're kind of bumping up to storm levels just for short durations and then back down again. That may continue over the next day or two. We've also got a small remnant of a coronal hole that we're dealing with, so some fast wind there. All of this is making kind of unsettled conditions and kind of unpredictable conditions for the next couple days before things begin to settle down. Switching to our M flare threat meter, you can see we've been reasonably quiet. We had a little C class activity back in the late part of March, but then things died back down. And then all of a sudden, you can see it April 1st, blammo! Look at this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven M class flares, all in the span of about 48 hours until that region 2644 rotated around the backside. You can actually watch that flux level begin to dip back down as the, the brightness kind of got occulted by the the actual limb of the sun. And now we're just dealing with region 2645, which has yet to fire off a big M-class flare, but there's still a chance, at least over the next couple days. Switching to your solar storm conditions, you can see things were pretty quiet until the end of March when BAM! We got hit by this solar storm. This was some fast wind from a big coronal hole, and things just kept going and storming and storming for days on end. You can see we continued storming through the early part of April before things started dying down. And then as soon as things died down the 1st of April, you poor amateur radio operators, you got hit with these radio blackouts from the M-class flares that just went on and on and on. So you poor things, you've been dealing with either solar or storm conditions or radio blackouts for basically the past two weeks. Luckily, things are beginning to finally quiet down and you can get back on the bands and go whew. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, because of all of the activity that we've seen on the sun, with all the solar storms that are being fired off, not Earth-directed, but with just a little bit of stuff that's kind of coming off and glancing, hitting us, a little bit of fast wind tossed in there, it's kind of like a big Caesar salad that's just kind of being thrown at us. We're really expecting unsettled conditions. I mean, it's almost anything's a go. We ha Noah's given us about a 20% chance of minor storm conditions at high latitudes, probably over the next few few days or so before things calm down just at least a little bit. At mid-latitudes, again, uns unsettled conditions, a possibility of aurora, about a 25 or 20% 20 chance of uh, active conditions down at mid-latitudes, and then things quiet down a little bit. But pretty much uh, about a week from now, we're probably going to ramp things back up again with some more fast wind from another coronal hole. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we are still at risk for M-class flares. NOAA is giving us about a 35% chance of an M-class flare, which is diminishing over the next few days due to regions 2644, which is on the backside now, but just barely, and 2645. Now that means we do have a chance for ham radio blackouts, so that is still a possibility. The only nice thing that we have is that all of this activity has increased the solar flux levels, so you amateur radio operators should also be able to enjoy a little bit better propagation now that things have kind of quieted down and you're not getting radio blackouts. However, because these regions are on the west limb, we do have an increased chance of radiation storms. They haven't fired anything like that at us yet, so probably not going to see it, but NOAA is giving us about a 20% 20, 20 chance of a radiation storm, which again decreases over the next few days to pretty much nothing by the end of the week. So for those of you who thought we were already at solar minimum, the sun goes, gotcha. But that's okay. It's normal for the sun to have a few hot spots on its way to solar minimum. It's kind of like the kid who you already tuck in bed then gets up and asks mommy and daddy for a glass of water before they go to sleep. Don't worry. The sun will go to sleep.
Meanwhile, those regions, they'll take about 14 days to rotate back into Earth view. We'll see if they survive their backside transit. Most likely they'll be quiet, but you never know. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.